Hello everyone! You're gonna want to stick around here at Brandeo Collection as we take a look at an exciting new signing announcement for an extremely rare signer. So stick around at the jump as we take a look and speak more in detail on who this exciting signer is. So jumping right into things, I wanted to do a quick video going over this new signing announcement. Now we've recently had the Book of Boba Fett TV show going on on Disney Plus. And as of this recording, we have one episode left, the season finale coming up this Wednesday. And last episode, we had some really exciting things happen on that episode. Of course, we had Luke Skywalker show up, seeing a little bit of his training with Grogu. We also had Ahsoka show up again there, speaking not only to Mando, but actually having a full-on interaction with Luke Skywalker. And we had Cobb Vanth returning again on Tatooine, of course, and the buildup of this war between Boba Fett and his supporters, and of course, the Pike Syndicate. And of course, in between all these other exciting things that happened in the last episode of Book of Boba Fett, we had the live action introduction of one of the best characters from the animated series, and that is Cad Bane, the Bounty Hunter. It was really exciting to see him show up in the Book of Boba Fett, and I'm excited to see what his involvement is going to be in the final episode of this season of the Book of Boba Fett. So that's to be seen as of the recording of this video, and we'll take a look at what that is. But on top of all of this excitement going on with the show itself, Star Wars Autograph Universe. They have always been kind of the go-to place when it comes to getting autographed pieces from the Disney Plus TV shows. They were the ones who got the entire cast of both season one and season two of The Mandalorian to sign with them. So you can get these complete cast pieces of Pedro Pascal, Gina Carano, Carl Weathers, Werner Herzog, and the list goes on and on and on of all these major characters. And now with the Book of Boba Fett, they're also getting not just actors, but also behind the scenes people from Book of Boba Fett as well. Right now, they have 16 to 17 different signers that are directly involved with both the in front of the camera and behind the camera of the Book of Boba Fett. And one of the best things is this past week, they made an announcement of a particular signer that is someone that's extremely rare. Somebody who, if you are a Star Wars autograph collector, somebody that you've always wanted in your particular collection, somebody that was very hard to get. Now, the first person that they announced as part of this particular character is they announced the person who was also the body of Cad Bane in that last episode of Book of Boba Fett, and that is Dorian Kingi if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. He was the one who was the actual body and the face, of course, with the prosthetics over that of Cad Bane in that episode. Now, if you listen to the voice of Cad Bane, you would notice it sounds very familiar or, of course, exactly the same as it was in the Clone Wars animated show and in his most recent animated uh, appearance, which was the Bad Batch back last summer in 2021. And that is because the voice of Cad Bane in live action is also the same person who did him in animation. And that is the incredible and very versatile voice actor, Corey Burton. And now Corey Burton has never done a private signing. He is almost impossible to get signatures from prior to this private signing announcement. He is someone that most people who collect the animated series of Clone Wars and just kind of Star Wars in general, most people don't have him in their collection at all because there's almost exactly no pieces that exist with Corey Burton on them when it comes to Star Wars. Now, of course, there are pieces that do exist out there that were obtained in various different ways over the years, but there's not many that exist prior to this signing announcement. And now people have the opportunity 
to get whatever they want signed. So you can add these new pieces to your collection. You can get a shot of Cad Bane signed. You can get a shot or a poster, I should say, of the Clone Wars uh, or of Bad Batch of many other different things. So I wanted to jump on here and just talk about how incredible it is that we have this opportunity as autograph collectors in general, as Star Wars fans, to add these pieces to our collections. Thanks once again to SWAU, Star Wars Autograph Universe, always going back to the roots of Star Wars on top of all the many other wonderful signings that they offer. So what I wanted to do is actually go through a little bit of Corey Burton's filmography of some characters that you may know of his other than Cad Bane from Star Wars. That way you can talk about this, how big of a impact he's had on the world of voice acting over the last 40 plus years, starting all the way back in the late 70s, going all the way up now to 2022. He's had a versatile career, almost 800 credits under his name throughout his entire time in the entertainment business. So he has some wonderful different characters that you may know on top of his Star Wars appearances. Now, actually, other than Cad Bane in the Clone Wars, the other main character that he played was Count Dooku. Of course, the Sith Lord himself, played by Christopher Lee in the live-action prequel films. Now, Christopher Lee did do the voice of Count Dooku in the Star Wars Clone Wars animated film, the one that was released in theaters that kind of started things off before the show started on TV. But once the show became a television show, that is when Corey Burton took over and was doing the voice of Count Dooku all the way from the moment that show started, all the way down to, of course, the last appearances of Count Dooku in that particular show. He also was the voice of Zero the Hut on that show as well, um, on both the movie and the TV show. So that was another character he did. He did voice other kind of random characters throughout the time of the Clone Wars, but the main characters that he did was Count Dooku, Zero the Hut, and of course, Cad Bane that we talked about earlier. Those are the ones he's the most famous for. Now, other than Star Wars, he has an extremely big impact in the world of Disney, and he's been really ingrained in the world of animation there through a lot of different films. Now, of course, he is one of those voice actors that you can think of a film, and he's probably in that film. He's probably done something in that movie. But other than those types of just random appearances and just random voices here or there in the background of famous Disney films, he's also some major characters that you may know and love. One of the main characters that he's been voicing since the 80s is Ludwig von Drake. Now, of course, he's shown up in DuckTales and many other Donald Duck related properties since the 80s up till now. But also, if you're a kid of the 90s or even the 80s, you'll probably remember those sing-along videos where the introductions were done by Ludwig von Drake. He was the voice of him in those VHS tapes that had those sing-alongs of classic Disney songs and everything that we learned and loved as kids growing up in the 80s and the 90s. So that is one of those things ingrained in my brain ever since I was a kid. Other than Ludwig von Drake, he has also been the voice of Captain Hook since the 80s as well. So whenever there's been a property that has used Captain Hook in relation to the Disney version of Peter Pan, he has been the one who's been doing the voice of Captain Hook since then. Some other properties, some other things he's done. He's also the voice of Yin Sed, which is the wizard from Fantasia. But of course, he's not uh, back in the original Fantasia because that's before he was born. But he was the voice of Yin Sed in the Kingdom Hearts video games. He's also been in the Kingdom Hearts video games for other things for the other characters that he's voiced with Disney other than Yin Sed um, from there. And... Other than those things, he's also a major voice in the Disney theme parks, which is a big part of my passion, a big piece of my childhood, and something that I've continuously grown to love and respect over the years is the creation and the work that goes behind the people who really work on these projects at the Disney parks. And two of the main attractions that he's done voices for is both Pirates of the Caribbean and The Haunted Mansion. 
In the Pirates ride, he is the voice that you hear over the loudspeaker when you're getting into your boat to make sure that you're safe, you're holding on to your possessions, your children, making sure everything's good to go. And he's also the voice of the pooped pirate, as they call him, the one that is holding the treasure map that's trying to hide it from Captain Jack Sparrow, as Captain Jack Sparrow is peeking his head out of the barrel looking at the map over that pirate's shoulder when they did the reimagining of Pirates of the Caribbean back in 2006 and how it stands up to today. And then when we're moving over to the Haunted Mansion, specifically the Haunted Mansion in California at Disneyland, Every year during the Halloween and Christmas season, they transform the Haunted Mansion into the Haunted Mansion Holiday, which is a Nightmare Before Christmas overlay. And they've been doing that around since 2002, 2003. And he was brought in to re-record all the voice work of the ghost host. Now, the original ghost host that was there from the beginning and the one you can still hear today in the regular version of Haunted Mansion is Paul Fries. And Paul's, Paul Fries was a person that Corey Burton looked up to. Probably one of his biggest inspirations to get into uh, the work of voice acting. And so jumping into there, it's really appropriate that he would have a perfect voice to mimic and sound exactly like Paul Fries in the Haunted Mansion Holiday overlay uh, voice work. And that's another thing that I have ingrained in my head ever since they've been doing that overlay. I listen to that soundtrack every year. I have that kind of voiceover memorized when it comes to the Haunted Mansion Holiday and the regular Haunted Mansion. So those are pieces um, that, uh, something that I always really kind of gravitate towards and really, really love. All of this just barely scratches the surface when it comes to Corey Burton and his career. He has almost 800 credits, as I mentioned earlier, on his IMDb. So I'm sure you'll go take a look at that and find something from your childhood that you'll be able to find on there and latch onto. I didn't even mention the original Transformers as Shockwave, so we're going to throw that one in there as well. If you're interested in learning more about this autograph signing, I'll provide a link in the description below directly to SWAU, Star Wars Autograph Universe. The signing does go live on February 8th. So as of this video posting, we're going to post it right before it goes live. But once it does go live, go check out Star Wars Autograph Universe to see what images they have available so you can learn much more about sending in an item that you'd like to send in so that that way you can get it ready and add Corey Burton to your Star Wars, Disney, Transformers, and many other different animation projects in your autograph collection. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you're brand new here, subscribe to our channel, hit that bell notification to be notified when we post new videos. We're gonna do more videos like this, talking about some exciting new autograph opportunities across the entire community, and also talking about anything else pop culture related, whether it be autographs just like this, one six scale figures, comic books, and much, much more. So thank you once again for taking some time to stick with us today, go over this exciting announcement, and as always, keep on collecting.